you have these particles, golden particles with the same conductor, you have the uh, coupling of plasma and uh, the excellent. So, um, do you have the enhancement of, of many further? Good question. Um, you're probably asking um, on the, about this slide, and I'll come back to that. Um, ooh, too fast. And uh, um, yeah, yeah. So I indeed, when you combine the semiconductor particles and, and gold or metal particles, you can have two cases when the fluorescence of semiconductors really strongly quenched and case when it's actually increased. Here we have, in this particular case, we see enhancement of the fluorescence of uh, semiconductor nanoparticles in uh, four, uh, uh, this kind of structure, as well as for uh, the nanowires with gold there. This uh, distinction, when you have quenching and uh, enhancement, very much depends on how far the particles are. Also, it depends how strongly luminescent of your particles are. If they are not as strongly luminescent, you, you're easier to see enhancement. And the geometry of the assemblies. In this case, we saw actually enhancement of the luminescence because in part uh, you see here gold and uh, the semiconductor nanoparticles here are coupled to gold in many in many different directions so uh, with uh, alexander Hovorov, we we demonstrated that this coupling in that case results in enhancement of the, f the, I mean the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the fluorescence, because basically what's happening here is, when you use a lot of nanoparticles, and you create a joint electronic state between plasmon and many many excitons, you basically add a lot more exciton character to this joint electronic state. Yeah. And the plasmon adds just the rate of the emission. So it's, it facilitates the emission. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes. In fact, here it is uh, what we saw. As we stretch it by heating, it goes away. Uh, when we stretch it, uh, polyethylene glycol actually collapses. It becomes closer. Enhancement is increased. Uh, when we cool it down, it relaxes, and uh, uh, the particles becoming further apart. And as a result of then the enhancement drops, the luminescence drops. You know? Indeed, here we can change the enhancement or the luminescence by stretching it. Also, I need to point out that the effect here is small. And this is a problem. That's why we're not investigating it a lot more. Great question. I really appreciate that because it allows me to talk things that I... I'm thinking now, about, you know. Yeah, uh, you probably are asking about uh, that slide. Uh, the answer here is, th is this, that they cannot, uh, I mean, these sheets exist in a solution. So they're n you don't need to dry the particles. They self-organize and stable. They have enough mechanical uh, robustness to, uh, let's say, to withstand shaking and uh, swirling and other uh, mechanical factors around. Uh, the reason why they don't form a monocrystalline sheet, possibly due to a couple of reasons. One is uh, 
that indeed there are gaps here. And um, once you have gaps, in order to make a monocrystalline sheet, you need to fill it up with something. We don't have the materials, or that would require lots of energy. Uh, the other reason is uh, that uh, the facets here is such that uh, the particles are attracted, but they're not epitaxial. In fact, two-dimensional sheets for zinc oxide and for cadmium telluride are not characteristic at all. They, they like to form wires, they like to form cubes, but the uh, two-dimensional, uh, like in molybdenum sulfide, for instance, is really not characteristic because of high energy associated with tellurium uh, 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 or tellurium layer of, uh, of atoms. So they're not stable. They can be stable if you have stabilizers, but once you have stabilizers, you don't have epitaxy and can form sheets which could be robust, but not um, on a crystalline. Yeah. Um, yeah, from here, we can say that what do we need to do to make them monocrystalline? That would be the question that I would possibly pose. And uh, uh, I would say that you have a couple of options. Uh, for instance, heat treated after the assembly, uh, annealing can be uh, the, the, the way to do it, or to use a different type of nanoparticles. <laughs> Usually, the length, midpoint, shape, and size, size of the nanoparticles. Mm -hmm. We believe the solvent can also affect the cell signature force. Thank you, Emerson. Absolutely. Um, the answer is absolutely yes. In fact, the transition between a tetrahedron uh, with truncation and tetrahedra in a perfect axial or apex with perfect apexes is done by using a different solvent and different amount of stabilizer. So media and the process of synthesis really strongly affects the, uh, the, the geometry of the particles. I also would like to point out that the geometry by itself can have and the distribution. So in case of the proteins, you can form very specific molecular structure. The problem is in folding it. In case of the nanoparticles, most of the time you cannot form a very specific atomically defined structure, but you avoid this folding process and can much with much better, uh, uh, if you need a tetrahedron or you need a cube, you can have much greater yield of that particular geometry th than in case of the proteins. And so there is a dispersion in the geometries all the time. And sometimes you need to look at it not as an adversary, but more as an advantage that you can actually choose the right geometry from a, a pretty simple a preparation of the nanoparticles. Yeah. And, uh, and right now we're uh, looking into the utilization of um, ultra centrifuge to uh, finally um, separate the shapes of the particles. The truncated from non-truncated. You know, it's actually hard work and interesting problem. I'm also thinking a lot about uh, the, uh, 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 the shapes of the nanoparticles which are so-called non-Euclidean, if I'm not mistaken which have 
uh, internal like cavities or, or angles, I mean like this. This would be interesting particles. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? That's a student, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations for this excellent lecture and demonstration of the importance of intergalactic forces. I would just like you to comment a little bit more on why you were not able to simulate the longer wires with the Monte Carlo method. Yeah. What is the Monte Carlo method like? Yeah. I think Monte Carlo needs input from us. Oh, uh, um, mechanism or a part of the mechanism which would facilitate the formation of the chains. In Monte Carlo there we assumed that there is an equilibrium attachment and uh, uh, de uh, and uh, detachment of nanoparticles and therefore we have this force, uh, the, the, I mean this energies um, after that, we did not pursue it that much because I s I'm still much more ad adapt to experimental work. I cannot write the codes myself. I mean, I did when I was a graduate student. Uh, um, but there possibly, or there is very much likely, some part of the mechanism, some part of the process, which shifts the equilibrium uh, toward the attachment, which does not uh, allow the particles uh, to detach when uh, they uh, already found their uh, uh, their chain. Um, uh, that's the result of of the thinking that I had about that. Indeed, something which is possibly can be modeled very well and explained. We just didn't have time to do that.